Hello everyone, I'm Devin Coombs, and today I'm going to discuss how to record a cash sale in financial accounting, as well as a credit sale, and what the differences between cash sales and credit sales are, and how you record them. I'm making this video because a viewer requested me to, so feel free to request or ask me any questions, because I love answering questions, and I'm making these videos for you. I'm not making them for myself, so feel free to ask me any questions that come to your mind and I'll do my best to answer them. So let me read the question. A business sells coffee for $3 a cup. The cost of the inventory is $1.50 per cup. What is the correct journal entry to record a cash sale for three cups of coffee? So first we have to do some basic calculations. We know that the cups of coffee sell for $3 a cup and we know that we sold three. So three times three equals the $9 in cash sales that you're receiving. So we know that we're increasing our cash and we know we have a $9 sale. But what are the journal entries for this calculation? Well, the journal entries are a debit to cash for $9 and a credit to sales for $9, as well as a debit to cost of goods sold for $4.50 and a credit to inventory for $4.50. So. I want you to know that I'm actually using an assumption for this problem. We're going to be using the perpetual inventory system during this problem. The reason we're using this is because it's probably one of the more common inventory systems used. The other inventory system is the periodic inventory system, and I'm going to make a different video that goes into the differences of these two systems in detail. So let's look at the two journal entries. So we increase cash through a debit for $9 because we received it. And we're also increasing our sales through the credit of $9, which is increasing it. So that makes sense. But let's look at the cost of goods sold. So because we sold some coffee, we have to account for the inventory decreasing as well as the cost of that inventory. So the question reads that it cost $1.50 per cup of coffee made. So $1.50 times three cups of coffee sold equals $4.50. So we're going to increase our cost of goods sold, which is an expense, by $4.50 through a debit. And we're going to decrease our inventory, which we no longer have, through a credit of $4.50. So with this information, we can actually calculate something pretty interesting, the gross profit of the sale. So we know that the gross profit of a sale is equal to the sale minus its cost of goods sold. So with the sale in mind, we just have to take our $9 sale minus our cost of goods sold of $4.50 to calculate that we have a gross profit of $4.50. So that means that we are making $4.50 off of this sale. So using this information, we can also cal calculate our gross profit margin or our ratio. So our gross profit ratio is actually equal to our gross profit divided by our sales. So our gross profit ratio for this problem is $4.50 divided by $9, which equals 50%. So that means for every dollar sale we have, we're actually making 50 cents in gross profit. So this is a very useful ratio and it's something that you should memorize as soon as possible because it will make the rest of your studies much easier. So now let's look at the difference of recording a credit sale. So I just changed the problem a little bit here. I changed it to read at the end, what is the correct journal entry to record a sale of three cups of coffee on credit? So this is no longer a cash transaction, it is now a credit transaction. So there actually isn't that many changes to the journal entry. All we're changing is instead of debiting cash, we are now debiting accounts receivable for $9. So that's just going to change the accounts on the balance sheet, but it's really not going to change much else. So the only difference is this change and the fact that you're eventually going to have to collect this accounts receivable. To collect the accounts receivable and to journalize that collection, you have to debit cash and credit accounts receivable. This will increase your cash for $9 and decrease your accounts receivable for $9, which is effectively what 
the cash transaction would have been normally the, the debit to cash and the credit to sales. So that accounts receivable can also be seen as a holding account, but that's the only real difference with a credit sale. In the later videos, we can go into how to record bad debt, expenses, and allowance for doubtful accounts, but that gets a little more complex and we'll leave it for a separate video. So I hope I helped answer the question to the viewer, and I hope you all enjoy this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.